attempts to kind of suppress the scan that were shown in the Widowmaker movie that David Bobbitt and IHDA got made, uh, there was a pretty strong resistance for many decades and I've touched on some of the arguments that were brought up but you also had a another very interesting story about the Mayo Clinic which was quite striking as to how the medical business works. Y yes, well we have in this country for-profit medicine and um, the human human mind is you know tempted by uh, money and and so on, but the the Mayo Clinic was, and John Rumberger was originally there, and but the Mayo Clinic uh, team uh, did some of the early research on coronary calcium, and they were, in, in fact, they published a study of a hundred patients, and had a, they had a hundred patients with scores of zero, and no one had a heart attack, and all the other patients did. So, and that study was written up in the New York Times. It was uh, very. Uh, significant at the at the time this was early on so the Mayo Clinic wanted to said oh this is fantastic we we can predict uh, not only who's going to have a heart attack but we can predict who needs an angiogram or not <laughs> and so the Mayo Clinic has a uh, cath lab I, think, I guess they have four or five maybe more cath labs and um, but what happened was the group that was doing the coronary calcium research studies and the multi-center studies uh, wanted to set up a, a service for coronary calcium screening at the Mayo Clinic. And uh, they applied to the administration of the hospital for a phone number so people could call up, they could put a phone number, and pe people could make appointments and come in and get, get a screening study. And uh, the, it was squashed by the administration. And the argument was that at the Mayo Clinic, 50% of the andrograms turn out to be normal. And if we start doing this coronary calcium screening, we're gonna lose 50% of our cath lab business. And that's 25% of the revenue of the whole institute. Wow. So we had the same thing when we talked to all the drug companies about uh, the statin drugs. We talked to Merck, Bristol Myers, all those. We, we said, would you guys want to team up with us because we could predict the people who need to be prescribed a statin drug. We could, we could help, uh, help you with that. And uh, every single drug company turned us down. They said, well, that would mean we wouldn't get to sell our drugs to the people who don't need them. <laughs> Which is, uh, to be honest, not unexpected attitude, but uh, it's, it's quite shocking in a sense also. But it's, it's, it's not just in this area, it's every area of medicine. So it's, this is not, the, car, cardiac isn't the only part of medicine that has this kind of problem. True, and medicine is a high revenue, high margin business, and threatening high revenues or margins will, will always be um, highly resisted. But I didn't realize that the story also applied to, to the drug manufacturers as well as the Mayo Clinic, so that's fascinating, Tug, to be honest. Yeah, and we didn't even bring up the stent people. <laughs> oh, well, the whole stent question, yeah, is, is another whole story. Yeah. Uh, but I think there's another parallel with the insurance industries. Uh, in the Widowmaker movie, I can't recall the guy's name, but he explained that no one was interested from the insurance companies because people move every few years. So if they actually cover this test and people are identified and they do avoid a heart attack and get healthier, some other company will probably get the benefit. So they had no interest. So even the insurance companies, it was a problem.